It's now March 2016, two months since I last spoke with Richard Rosario, and we're about a week away from publishing this report when I hear some big news. The Bronx DA has recently sent investigators to Florida to speak with Rosario's alibi witnesses. So I call one of them to find out more. And what did they say? Well, they were just questioning and they recorded the conversation. Remember Fernando Torres? He's the pastor and father of Sheriff's Deputy John Torres. And he tells me four investigators from New York were at his home in Florida that very morning. So did they interview you and Margarita? Yes, and they were taking turns. They were going over to the other people like Genoa, and then they were going to go check my son out in Palm Beach. Huh. Maybe the timing of all this is just a coincidence. Then just a few days later, there's even bigger news. So here I am working on the final touches of this series when I get a call from Richard's lawyer saying that the DA's office is going to vacate the conviction against him just like that. I called the DA's office, they confirmed it, saying they now believe Richard did not get a fair trial. Basically what that means is that Richard is walking out of prison a free man and that's happening in the next couple of days. And almost as if it was destined, Rosario's wife Minerva and his kids Amanda and Richard Jr just happened to be in New York visiting him this very day. 20 years of my life, I've never seen my father outside of prison. Rosario's lawyers at the Exoneration Initiative had just broken the news, and Minerva is overwhelmed. To hear that, he's, he's going to be released after 20 years. I mean, God, there's so many emotions tied to that. Just 24 hours later, and Richard Rosario is about to be a free man for the first time in 20 years. As the press assembles in the courtroom, across the street, I meet with Darcel Clark, the Bronx District Attorney. The first time anyone from that office has agreed to go on the record with me since I began looking into this case. I presided as a judge in this county for 13 of my 16 years on the bench, and now I'm the chief law enforcement officer for the entire borough. You grew up right here? whole life in the Bronx. I'm a daughter of the Bronx. She's actually made history. Clark is the first African-American woman to be a district attorney in the state of New York. She's been in office for three months. As we're sitting here right now speaking, folks from your office are driving Richard Rosario from prison to the courthouse to be released. Yes. Why are you doing that? Well, um, before I took office, I met with the exoneration initiative uh, about Mr. Rosario. and it came to my attention that they had an appeal and our answer was due. So before I did anything else on Mr. Rosario's case, I thought it was necessary to just do the preliminary steps of investigating the case or the allegations. He had an alibi defense that was never investigated. So the first thing I did was, let's investigate the alibi. Sounds so simple, the way she says it. And you said, why don't we call him? No, I sent somebody down. There. You sent somebody down to talk to them, right? Yes. Why has that not happened in 20 years? I cannot speak for that. I've, I've been the district attorney since January 1st. Was it surprising to you when you heard that, that no one from the Bronx DA's office or the NYPD, no one in law enforcement, has ever reached out to those alibi witnesses until last week when you did it? I, I have to say I was surprised. I was surprised. And it didn't take long for her to conclude Richard Rosario did not get a fair trial. But that doesn't mean she believes he's innocent. Richard Rosario called me last night. Yes. I spoke with him last night. And he is obviously extraordinarily thankful that he's going to be reunited with his family. But he told me he felt cheated, disappointed, because you're not exonerating him. Why not? Well, because there still needs to be more investigation. I didn't have a chance to thoroughly investigate every aspect of his defense, as well as continuing to investigate the crime itself. I need a chance to investigate it more. But in the meantime, there's no reason for him to have to wait behind bars in order for me to continue the investigation. From, from Rosario's perspective, he says, I've never changed my story. It's obvious that I'm innocent, he says. Now this is hanging over my head. How, do, how does he move on? How does he rebuild his life? Well, I hope that he can do that by the fact that he's no longer in state prison. But I think that he can be reassured that now 
that I am the district attorney and I'm reviewing his case, that I am doing just that. And I think that I've uh, demonstrated the sincerity of the work and the integrity behind the work that this office is doing. So we're just a few minutes away from Richard coming out. There's a ton of press here, which is surprising because no one was really interested in his case for 20 years. And, uh, we're going to see what happens. As his family looks on, Rosario is led into the courtroom, shackled. Your Honor, I was going to ask if the cuffs can be taken off of him. The cuffs are quickly removed. An attorney from Bronx DA Darcel Clark's office tells the judge they now believe Richard Rosario did not receive a fair trial. We can see that the defendant did not receive effective assistance of counsel. Um, we can sense the release of the defendant on his own recognizance. But Rosario knows he's not off the hook just yet. He still faces a possible retrial and is due back in court in June to hear what the DA will do. The jury is still out on the DA's office with regards to this wrongful conviction, and I hope that she would do the right thing to exonerate me, because I've been in prison for 20 years for a crime I didn't commit. My family didn't deserve this. I didn't deserve this, nor the victim's family or the victim. And I hope this, um, this conviction is not just vacated, but exoneration is given to me. The ruling is according and is hereby ordered that the defendant's motion to vacate the conviction is granted. You are hereby released. And just like that, unthinkable a few months earlier, Richard Rosario is now a free man. He walks out of the courthouse with his family, subdued, only interested in naming other inmates who he believes are innocent. Free John Adrian Velasquez. Free Archie Cozy. Who knows what the future holds for Richard Rosario? For now, he heads to Florida to be with his family and wait while the Bronx DA's office continues to investigate and decide if it will retry him. Rosario will be back in court in a few months to learn his fate. You want the DA's office or the court to recognize, Mr. Rosario, you're actually innocent. Yes, absolutely, and nothing, would, nothing else would be acceptable. That's next on Conviction.